Hello everybody and welcome back to the free online woodworking school where we aim to take your woodworking skills to the next level. In today's video, we're gonna get a finish on that thing. Let's get going. Right, and so for finishing this cabinet, you guessed it right, I'm gonna be going for Osmo. Specifically, this is the clear satin finish. I like this because I don't really like things to look too glossy unless they're sort of small ornaments. But in this case, I don't want the finish to be too flat either. I want it to be sort of that middle ground and so satin is where that lies. And I'm probably gonna be doing this finishing process over the next three days. Inside faces, I'm aiming to get two coats on and then the exterior faces, two or three, I don't really know. But yeah, that should take two to three days to do because I'm not gonna be attacking all the faces of this carcass, for example, in one day. I'll probably have to spread it out over two days to ensure I don't get fingerprints and stuff everywhere. So obviously the drawer, the inside of this is finished, but it's looking a little bit dusty and grim in there at the moment. So I'm gonna need to air that out and try and get another coat of lemon oil in there to try and get that aroma back and build up the contrast that we've kind of lost as a result of the dust in there getting embedded in the grain. And the process I'm going to do this in is starting with the inside face and then apply finish to the outside afterwards. If I do it on the outside first and then I move to the inside, there's a high chance I'll get fingerprints and stuff on the outside here. So doing it the other way just kind of makes a bit more sense. As for these components that sit flat, again, I'm going to start on the inside faces just because it's easier to keep track of. And on the inside faces of these plinths, particularly the bottom one, you probably only need one coat. There's not really a lot of it exposed that's gonna be rubbed or seen for that matter. It's probably gonna be the exterior faces that we need a little bit more attention to. So by starting with this inside face, getting the first coat on there, it just gets it out of the way and then I can focus on these outside ones afterwards. First things first though, I wanna get this thing dusted down to ensure we get a nice contrast in the grain. I don't want it being stuffed full of that dust and therefore make it look a bit cloudy. So I'm gonna be doing this with the old air gun and a mask, but you could use a tack cloth, for example, to do this, and that'd be absolutely fine. Right, so that's coat one finished. I've got the cabinet upside down at the moment because I don't want any dust falling on the show faces. So upside down is good for that. See these ones, one coat there. I haven't done the underside of them because they're sitting flat on the bench, it'd be pointless. I've only done the back of the door and I've only done the bottom faces and the exterior face of the drawer. I haven't done the top edges yet because again, it's sitting on that face. The back, I've done this face, haven't done the underside of it. And uh, yeah, rags are on the floor, laid flat so that we don't get any combustion overnight because I'd rather keep this workshop. So yeah, we'll get this, uh, we'll leave this drying overnight and we'll see you for coat two tomorrow. Right, so it's now day two and what we're gonna do is just feel over all the surfaces and check that they're nice and smooth. With most finishes, including Osmo, even though it's not really supposed to, you will get small lumps and bumps in places. That could be due to the grain raising, it could be due to dust getting stuck to it, and it's best to get rid of that before applying the second coat. So to do this, I've got a abrasive mesh. This is about the equivalent of 1500 grit, but in the past I've done it with a mesh that's the equivalent of 360 grit. So just something that's very fine. A mesh tends to work better than sandpaper as well because it doesn't clog as easily. And we're gonna use this to just very lightly scrub over the surfaces, not cutting through the finish, just taking off those little nibs on the surface to get us a nice smooth coat on this second layer. Cool, so everything's feeling nice and smooth now and we're ready to start applying the second coat. So there's certain faces on here now that I'm not gonna bother doing a second layer on. Firstly, the bottom of the cabinet, because that's sitting on a plinth, it's a bit of a waste even doing a first coat to be honest. So we're just gonna do all the top faces, all the side faces of this and not bother with anything else. As for the plinths, I'm gonna be doing the face without the chamfer on it and I'm gonna be doing the chamfer itself, but I'm not gonna bother doing this inside face because on the bottom, that will pretty much never be touched and on the top, that will never be seen either. And so that means we can rest it on that face while the chamfer and the rest of this dries. 
So that'll be on both of them. As for the draw, we've already done the bottom, so I'm not gonna bother doing that again. I'm just gonna focus on the sides and the top of the draw, and then it can just sit on there while it dries. And as for the door itself, it's looking pretty good on the back already, even after one coat. So I'm gonna do the front for now, and then when we do the third coat on the rest of the cabinet, I'll see where it leaves us, but it might be okay with just one on the back and two on the front. We'll have to see. Right, there we go, there's the second coat complete. And so I will see you on day three for the third and final coat. So I've just finished applying the third and final coat to the cabinet and I've got it set aside drying. Now I don't want to show you the finished result just yet because what we normally do with the online school projects is we take a trip down memory lane and we go back right to the start of the project and we do an overview of the entire thing in one video and then unveil the final result at the end of it. So if you want to see what my cabinet looked like after that final layer of finish, then be sure to go check out that video. It should be popping up now. But as always, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please do not forget to press the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one.